We are here in the week of April 17th. You have found your way to the Wild at Heart podcast, and I am so excited. We have a couple of special guests this week. Morgan and I are sitting in the studio together, but we have two of our friends here this week. But before I introduce them, let's pause and do what we normally do, which is take a moment, take a breath, release everything so that we can find God this week. Jesus, we do. We give everyone and everything to you. Everyone. Everything. What do I need to release? And we pray for our union with you to be deepened and strengthened and renewed. Meet us here this day this week in this podcast. Amen. So, Morgan, we've got a cool story to tell. And it, it, the story actually begins with a piece of counsel that we got from God when we were starting Wild at Heart, which was Ransomed Heart way back when, like 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he said, stay small and give it away which rescued us from a thousand nightmares of building a large organization and then having to maintain that and fund that. Um, and it's been a very, very beautiful thing over the years to stay small as an organization mm -hmm. and share the message with others. Let them join in the mm -hmm. joy of, of, you know, healing people's hearts and watching men and mm -hmm. women be restored. And it was counterintuitive at the time because, totally. I mean, the need was huge. People were responding. And the message was franchise this thing, get big, yes. build a strong system, yeah. and get people all around the world doing it exactly how you're doing it, yeah. right? Have a huge organization. Yeah. That was the pull. Right. So that council was really disruptive. It was disruptive, it, but it proved to be brilliant in, in the end. And so our bread and butter, um, I think most of our listeners know over the years, has been our retreats, our live, our live events. It's what we love most. It's it's an opportunity to create a a healing space, a sacred space for men and women to encounter God. And in that, to guide people into further restoration of their hearts, mm -hmm. further intimacy with God. So it's just, that's our joy, our bread and butter. But we couldn't keep up with the demand. And so a couple years ago, you came to us, Morix, and said, we really need to do, we need a different model. Yeah, we built this lottery system I designed after Colorado Parks and Wildlife, a big game hunting tag system. Because, yeah, so many people are showing up and we wanted to honor the thirsty, right? We want to say, yes, come. Like, we want to walk with you as, and um, we want you to walk with us as we all walk with God as men growing. But we realized we can't keep up with the demand. And then over time, we realized um, our mission has always been to invest in leaders that are going out into all these communities and cultures, just kingdoms of the world, and they're impacting those hearts one at a time, yep. one community at a time, one family at a time. And so we had the idea of what if we package this, this experience that we're anointed to offer, and we make it as easy as possible, lower the bar so that the guys out there, they don't have to be teachers. They don't have to be you, but if they're thirsty and they're willing to risk loving the men entrusted to their care, if they're willing to get a facility, if they're willing to pray and just facilitate space, they can bring our content and this anointed sort of um, in a box way of creating an atmosphere where a man encounters God. Yeah. And that's, yeah. where we, that, and that's what we went after. We took the Wild at Heart boot camp, as we call it. That's our four-day experience for men. And we put the entire thing into video sessions, including all of the film clips mm -hmm. that we use and the teaching and the prayer and all of it. So it's a live type experience that's plug and play. Mm -hmm. And we call it basic. And it has gone 
all over the world. It's just been like this most delightful, surprising story. So we're going to um, introduce a couple of our friends, a couple of men here. And I, before we get any further into this week's, you need to know that next week is uh, a couple of very special women that we are having on the podcast with us. So this is kind of a part one, part two. They happen to be the wives of the men you are about to meet. So you're going to hear from a couple guys this week, and you're going to hear from their wives next week. And I think you you ladies are going to enjoy both weeks. But to let you know, your your day is coming, which brings us to today. And we can introduce our friends, Joshua and Nathan from Florida and Pennsylvania. Joshua and Nathan are guys who just said yes. And we'll try it. We'll we'll I'll do basic. I'll ho- I'll have some guys over, and we would love to hear how's that going and wh- like what's that been like. So welcome to the Wild at Heart podcast, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're super stoked to have this conversation because you just tried it at one point, right? You've both done a couple basics now. A few. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, like yeah. how many? <laughs> Um, probably up to a dozen okay. or more. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. We've probably done about half, half that number. And, you know, as you asked the question, John, I, I'm, the memories are flooding back to the first mm-hmm. one, which was like six guys in a cabin and trying to figure out if the pizza was going to get there on time. And, um, just kind of the, the stress around logistics, Yeah. um, that actually could be afforded because, you know, I wasn't speaking, you know, mm. I, I was just going to hit play. Yep. And so I was freed up to make sure the guys, you know, their physical needs were met. Pizza was a really smart move, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> instead of you trying to make dinner as well and, okay. and all that, right? Can I tell the first one I did? Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a purist, right? I've been to the the, the boot camps and um, I'm going to make it epic, like chef style food, right? That we experience <laughs> at the boot camps, right? Um and I have ribs. I'm putting bacon on the grill. Oh I mean, gosh. I was killing myself. Rotisserie chicken. Oh, I mean, it was man. like we ate. It was wow. it was amazing. And it was just six of us, same thing, in, in, at, at my house. And uh, it was epic. But it was, you, you just it'd wear you out. And then after about three or four of them, I'm like, all right, no more of this. Pizza. <laughs> you, you go to Costco, you can get like the tacos. Yeah. Right? Everything, everything's pre made. Just pop it in, you're done. And then that was still just as good. And it was, it was amazing. So, when did you do. What year can you remember? When did you do your first basic? Yeah, for us it was um, it was twenty seventeen. Wow! So Spring, you were on the beta testing of it. Yeah, we yeah. Re- we actually reached out to you, yeah. right, in the early days and said, "Would you would you take this thing for a spin and give us your feedback?" Yeah, and I do recall. I mean, it, w- it wasn't quite as simple as hitting play then because yeah. the video clips weren't incorporated, but but they'd been made available separately. So I had two TVs mm. going, so we'd pause. Oh wow! And then hit play on the clip, and then come back, and it doesn't always work like it's supposed to. And um, but yeah, 2017. And what happened? <laughs> you got six guys. Did they leave halfway through? No, they didn't. Not not at all. You know, um, it was a rescue for every single one of them. And I don't want to set an expectation that that's always going to be the case. Um, but it was, uh, you know, a group of men who were invited um, just from my small network and personal invitations. Um, and I, we weren't trying to build something big. It was like, okay, God, um, we'll try this. And I think key, um, before we did this the first time, you know, I'd kind of been asking God, like, you know, the message was resonating, it was impactful on my own life and marriage and family. I said, you know, I want, I want to do this. And he just, he, he hit the brakes. He said, wait, you need someone to come with you in this. Mm. And a buddy in my group, like in my ski group and kids elementary school, got into boot camp in February of 17. And uh, he'd missed the August 16, I think that had been canceled. And God's like, he's your guy. And so he got back and I said, hey, what would you think if we could offer that to some other guys? And he was all in. Wow. Yeah. And for you? My first one was in summer 2019. And it was just an amazing, epic experience. Same thing, just praying, Lord, one of the dates. Weather was awesome, living in Florida. Um, Just had some great time. Um, The one I remember the most, though, was in March of 2020. 
So we're literally <laughs> right in the middle of our boot camp, and my wife is, has the emergency number, and her phone starts blowing up. And the guys, it's literally when COVID was launching. And so the guys are like, wait, what? And so they, they turn their phones on, and it's like, zzz, 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 and the world's falling apart. Right. Everything's like, shutting yeah, down. And it was a Saturday. I never forget it. It was outside. We were smoking cigars. And I was like, guys, everything's going to be okay. Calm down. Mm. Let's just stay with God. You're, we're here. You're you didn't here. cancel it? No. No, we just did it. Everybody stayed, and it was amazing, epic time. God moved, and it was one of the best. Like the, even to this day, the guys like it was one of the best times of our life. Like we stayed in this message. It was awesome. Well yeah. done. Yeah. I mean, if there was ever a moment to pull the plug, that would have been it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Everybody was local. Everybody lived there, so yeah. nobody yeah. traveled. So it was just like, hey, if something really happens, you can leave. You know, you're 10, 15 minutes away. So we actually got basic kind of buttoned up, yeah. tested, fixed, retested, fixed, film clips embedded, mm -hmm. got everything buttoned up right before 2020. Yeah, right? it's it's wild hearing your stories because it's it's helping refresh my memory. Like God was speaking to us about this for quite some time and we were just kind of slowly creating yeah. it. And about 2019 is where we started dialing it in and we just went, we want to resource our men. And then the next semester, the world shuts down. Yeah. And all these ministries like us, like we do live events, right? And for 400, you know, 500 people. Right. Yeah. And we've done this for, for you know, almost 20 years. And in God's wildness, in God's brilliance, little did we know he was preparing Wild at Heart yeah. for the shutdown because basics just got ramped up. Right. I mean, like you said, it was three guys. It was four guys in a cabin. And what we saw over the next two years, and this is just a supernatural reality. So we added up every man that ever attended a Wild of Heart boot camp with us here in Colorado or Australia or Wales. And then all of our men, like you guys, Joshua and Nathan, that hosted a basic in two years, there were more men that went through the wow to heart message in basic in two years than in almost 20 years live wow. with us. Okay. It's just whole. It, it, it is. It is. And it's, it's joyful, mm -hmm. right? I mean, are you guys enjoying this? Oh, immensely. I, the, um, the rescue for, you know, that we've experienced that then men get to experience through the message. Um, you know, there's nothing, I, I dare say there's, there's nothing that feels quite as good. Mm. You give an example, Nathan, of just in the trenches, these guys, you know, they're not as familiar with Wild of Heart as you are. They show up and, and can you give us a glimpse of a guy and what happens? Well, I mean, you guys know this, right? Like any guy's event that you're ever at and like they're showing up and you don't necessarily know the people coming. Everybody's got their force field up, you know, and, and all the, all the fig leaves are in full display. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I think early on, I was a lot of just prayer against that. And, and then he, there's an element just like that, you know, that's going to be there. And so then it's like asking God to just, you know, how do you want us to navigate that? Um, do you want us to be disarming? Do you want us to be funny? Um, you know, so, so I think like we've adopted this uh, chimney sweep concept mm -hmm. for guys to take down that fig leaf where, um, you know, they, we don't talk about what we do as men. So, you know, what we do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some guys will take that right to the very edge. Um, yes. <laughs> like, oh, I can't talk about my uh, fig leaf right. at a hospital in administration. <laughs> right, because they don't know another way. It's so disruptive. Mm -hmm. It's so disruptive. But in the, that, in the disruption is where God shows up. Mm. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, so I think like my own experience going to a live boot camp um, and now – both hosting and and attending the own, the basics that we operate, mm -hmm. I mean, there's really no difference. Mm -hmm. um, and in some ways, um, there's greater freedom for the guys mm -hmm. because some of the big personalities aren't mm -hmm. there, you right. know, um, like like John Eldridge. <laughs> Although we, saying John Eldridge is a liability. <laughs> out of the room. <laughs> Those are the stories we hear, though, right? There's something when it's just okay. The wait a second, guys. Mike. You're nodding as well. I have to go back to the statement you just made. You you just said it's the same. 
running a basic in your house or in a cabinet, it's the same as being live here with us. That's been your experience too? It has. Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow, guys. This was my big doubt. I knew we could package it well. I trusted Morgan and the team to do it professionally. You know, it's, it, it's nice. It's a good package, right? But would it work? Would it have the same impact? I didn't know. John, you know, one of the, the kingdom, supernatural kingdom things in this that I think is, is related is, is just shocking every time we do it. Because the you know, videos we're watching have been recorded over different times. And, you know, in every one, you're, you're praying. And you're praying for the, you know, the event you were at last year or three years ago or yes. eight years ago, you know? Yes. And every time that prayer is like for those men mm. yep. in that room, in that session. Yep. Come on. I don't even, I mean, only in the kingdom can that work. Right. Only. And it just gives me so much confidence that there is an anointing. Like this is God's message, God's timing, God's way, God's mission with his men. And I think what we're naming indirectly is we're all just participating. We're all being swept up yep. in something that's beyond strategy, that's beyond best practices. Like God is on the move and he's given us this resource that for guys like you out all around the world, like a willing heart that, that'll take the risk. Like what I hear you guys saying is he shows up mm -hmm. again and again and again faithfully. So Joshua, describe to me what you're doing. Like you're pulling together guys from your church, guys from your neighborhood and where are you doing this? I've done a few private and a few public. Um, the first ones I did private because I knew the men. I wanted to to run it by them first. Um, so what you mean is a private group of guys? Just a private group of guys, yeah. yeah. So the the six men that I chose, I knew I asked specifically, would you want to be a part of this boot camp? Um, they, were, they were all in and I did it the Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, because you've made it so easy. All we have to do is pick our pick our place, pick the time, pick the guys, and you go. I mean, it's how do you literally have the agenda? Um, I built a food like it's so easy. I just put my Costco list together. Everything it's it's done. It's literally done, um, and you just you run it. Um, I've done a lot of things in my life. I've been a lot of places, seen a lot of things, but there's nothing more rewarding than seeing a man's heart be set free. Yeah, there's nothing when you go after his heart and you see his heart set yeah. free. Yeah, it's for yeah. eternity. I can't get enough of it. Mm -hmm. I want to keep doing it mm -hmm. again and again and again and again yes. and building the kingdom. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's and it's so pure and it's so real and it's so rich. It's and it's eternal. It's forever. And it doesn't just change them. It changes their spouse. It changes their children. It changes their community. Mm. And then it changes mm. hopefully a nation mm -hmm. and a world. Mm. You did some private to begin with, meaning they were just guys in your yes. group. Morgan, explain the private public thing. How's that? Yeah, so when anyone lists a basic online, as you guys know, you can choose this is a private event or a public event. So the private choice allows us to continue to give you resources to support your mission with guys that you selected, guys in your community. If you designate it as a public event, as you guys also know, um, we then promote that event. So many people come to Wild at Heart, come to Become Good Soil looking for events. And at those sites, we get to say, yes, we have some awesome events for you hosted by our friends, hosted by our allies, and you can attend their events. And so we actually leverage people coming to us for events that we can't accommodate and we send them your way. So it's a, it's a, they're really two different types of strategies and they both have their their benefits and blessings. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. Like, so that's a private event, public event for both of you. Have you done that? And how how's that gone? Yeah, I think um, it is, we've hosted some smaller ones and some some larger ones. And the larger ones, I think it just as the public site was being launched, we said, uh, you know, it's kind of like, all right, yeah, we'll check that box. Who knows, God, what do you want to do? And, um, you know, one of my notes coming into this was just, the last minute guys that come through the public part of the site never disappoint. Mm. And, you know, so I'm always, when I'm, when I'm like trying to secure rooms and plan for who's going to be there, um, like, you know what, I'm going to add a couple because I know like three days before, two days before, someone's going to reach out and they're going to be, they're going to see it on the site where it's going to be there. They're the last minute Larry who's like, you know, <laughs> my, my wife said I should do this. And uh, <laughs> uh, we had one last time where it was his son had just been at a boot camp. 
came back and said, you've got to go to this. Mm -hmm. And he was a man in desperate need of the father. And he, he called me the day before and said, I know it's tomorrow, but like, could I drive up? And he got rescued. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I have mine in my home sometimes. And so it's, I'm more cautious, right? Who I bring into my house and my property. And, um, so I, I, I made, I made one uh, public and this gentleman called me and, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. And so I just start interviewing him, asking him some, some pretty good, tell me your story, you know, tell me a little bit where are you from? He was like, yeah, I'm here in Jacksonville. I'm actually from Pennsylvania and um, I'm here for proton therapy. I was like, proton therapy? Because they have a special proton therapy center there in Jacksonville. Because yeah, I've got cancer and um, I don't know. I don't know how much longer I have to live. Mm-hmm. It could be three months. It could be another 30 years. I don't know, you know, but I'm, I got to get this fixed. And so I'm here, but um, I actually talked to the doctor and he said, I can come to your boot camp if you'll let me, but mm-hmm. I'd have to leave from this time to this time. And it was during the break to go get my treatment, to come back. And he literally, I said, man, you're in, bro. I don't oh. care what happens, you're in. Wow. And it was such a blessing for him to be there. And he was like, Josh, this has changed my life. This has changed my life. Mm. And he would text every now and then. But uh, stories like that, he just, it's gold. Mm. It's, and it's forever. Mm. It is it is beautiful, isn't it? To watch God work in someone's life and to have hosted that, played a role in that, yeah. come alongside them in that. Yeah. 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 I think one of the things in my experience of you, John, and you, Morgan, and, and the entire team here is, um, you know, the tendency in, in men and humans to when, when the message comes through, the message that's rescuing you comes through someone, yeah. you want to go, you, you're my rescuer. And, um, you know, so, so I, I attended, you know, live boot camp. And I'm like, oh, Morgan's my rescuer, you know, and um, and then when you host this, there's an element of like you can see, even though all we're doing is hit and play, yep. we're just hit and play. Yep. But there, there's those guys who are like you, yeah, you know, you're the, you serve this message. Like I need you, and like an appreciation for watching how you guys have dealt mm-hmm. with that and being able to say, well, not me, mm-hmm. <laughs> everyone and everything to God and return them to the Father. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and, you know, not leave with an expectation of like, oh, here's the follow-up. They're going to get things from you. And it's just part of the plug and play that you guys have put in place that um, they they leave and they fill out their response form and then they get on the list and Mm -hmm. they get communications. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to carry them beyond that if you're hosting this. Mm apprehensions, thinking back to before you did this, were, were there any hesitations or, you know, thoughts going through your mind of either I'm not qualified or I don't know how this is going to go? Or like you said, Joshua, like, I'm going to try this in my house. Like, I'm curious because as we're talking about it, I remember my first, right? My first event that I offered for a group of guys and just taking that risk. And there, there's a a pucker factor. Like, let's be honest. Like, did you, what did you guys feel? As soon as you made it so easy to do, because I remember before when it was, you had to play the videos. I was like, ah, I don't want to do that. Like, I, I can't, like you said, I just, I don't have the time at that time. I didn't have the margin. Yeah. And then when this came available, I was like hundred percent, I can mm-hmm. do this. It's good. Yeah. And in terms of apprehensions, um, I, maybe I sound like a broken record here, but it hasn't, none of my apprehensions have to do with the um, the message, the, the medium of, of hitting play um, because it, it's so easy, right? Like I, if a guy was listening to me right now, I'd want them to know he can do this if this is on his heart. Um, the apprehensions come around the, the spiritual warfare, the prayer preparation, um, the what what's going to be coming against us in this particular event. Um, you know, to, and I wouldn't say maybe that was my apprehension on on the first one, but now that that's my chief apprehension. Mm. Um, where where is this where is this event booby trapped? Mm-hmm. Um, and and how will we respond? Um, and I say we because um, as as we've done a few of these now, we have a number of guys. It's not just Nathan hitting play, 
Um, we've got a team of guys mm -hmm. who are helping get the yep. campfire ready, yep. going to Costco. Yep. Um, oh, right on. Making sure that, you know, someone's tested the play before yep. we hit yes. play. <laughs> and that the music for the, you know, the time, the covenant of silence is ready. You know, yep. like all we've got, you know, it's not just me having to stress about those things. Right on. I think one other note to put in here, it's important, Nathan, as you're saying that about prayer, mm. you know, we ask for feedback from all our basic leaders and how can we make this as smooth as possible and as anointed as possible. And one of the feedback pieces was, is there a way to get more prayer support? Mm. And we said, absolutely. And so over time, we developed a Slack organization that's specifically for Wild Heart Basic you know, leaders, as you guys know, and we have a channel in that that's specifically for prayer. And of all of our Slack organizations, this one is one of our most active, most engaged, because there are so many men on mission. And what's really cool, I saw one get posted last week. Some guys in South Africa reached out and they said, we really want to do a basic. You know, we're new at this. And I said, you can do it and get on Slack and ask for prayer. And so they get on Slack mm -hmm. in South Africa. They ask for prayer. Ohio, Texas, North Dakota, these guys start jumping in, going to war on behalf of these South African men. And so what's really fun is as soon as you say yes, you actually get swept up into a global fellowship of men just like you. And I know there's a loneliness out there. I hear the stories all the mm. time, but this is like a direct way to tie to like-hearted men around mm. the world. And it's just been so fun to watch that happen. Some listeners are saying, what is Slack? It's sort of like email, but... It's an in-house communication. Yeah, it's a tech tool to basically get on a computer or on your phone through an app or a website, and it's a way to have conversation and connection and get resources around something. And in this case, we have a Wild at Heart basic Slack community. In other words, it's a technology. It's just, you get the app on your phone, it's free, you download it, you jump on, and essentially it's everything you do through text and email you can do regarding basic, but that's all it is. And so it's a focused little channel you can go to when you have time to engage. I was going to tell another story. Do it. Um, I have a friend and he was in trouble relationally things were going on in his life um and the holy spirit's like you need to do boot camp for this guy just you and him go yeah. go and so about a weekend later we drove about 45 minutes north into georgia um and at this uh, friend's house and we literally just got away on his ranch just he and i and this little double wide trailer and god came god <laughs> came for this guy the two of you did just basic the two of us, just, two, just the two of us did basic this guy cried on session six, and he's like, I've only cried three times in my life. Mm. This guy's in his 50s. And he's like, "This, what's happening? You know, I was like, wow. you're coming out of the matrix. Yeah. You're coming out of the matrix. Mm. Wow. I mean, it's just like story after story like that. How beautiful it's is amazing. that? amazing. Yeah. Wow. So you can do it with one guy. So, so if you're listening to this and you, you're, you're, that guy has popped into your head right now, mm. pray about it. Set the date. Talk to that guy. Go do it. Mm. Go do, do it at your home. I did it. You can do it. Go do it. We've got a buddy who's doing these in Scotland and his particular world and network is guys coming out of pretty serious rehab, um, hardcore chemical uh, dependency mm -hmm. guys, and they are crushing it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's the stories mm -hmm. coming out of it of rescue and the love of the father mm -hmm. and healing and wholeness. And so during the pandemic, the country shut down. You're not supposed to gather, right? But there was a loophole and the loophole was camping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could go camping. It was the one like permissible mm -hmm. thing, which thank God for yeah. that, that they allowed that. Well, camping in the British Isles includes these caravan camps, right? They're, uh, yeah. they're mobile homes, right? <laughs> so they, they just rented like three of these at this camp and got a bunch of dudes to go camping and do basic. So good. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It really is. Yeah, I had this just wild man from the west coast of Australia. And I, though we both speak English, when I was trying to read his emails, like, I need an interpreter. <laughs> I mean, this was like a, a different world. And he was basically saying, I'm getting my heart back. I want to go after the hearts of others. Like, what do I do? And it felt like there were so many cultural barriers. And but I 
it was so amazing to have something that I know will work. And we're across the globe and across culture. And Western Australia is very different than Sydney and New South Wales on the East Coast. So I sent him basic and said, give this a whirl and let me know how it goes. And he sent pictures. And just the beauty of seeing how it translates. And yes. it was exactly what he needed to, as you were saying, Joshua, like to make it accessible. There was no intimidation because God was in him and he had such a heart to go after these men, but he didn't have any of the other tools and he didn't have any money, you know, but they camped and did it on the cheap. And I mean, it costs food. That's what it costs. Yep. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. I'm thinking about apprehension again is, is uh, sometimes the apprehension is, is God going to come? I mean, like it's, is God going to show up for of these course. guys? Of course, we have come? that. We have that. <laughs> right. So, you, you know, I think one of the things you guys have done is, um, this is, you know, for potential facilitators out there, is that facilitator video yeah. each day. Yes. Right? You, you know, that it's not just going, you know, breakneck speed into the next session. It's, you know, all right, get your group of That's facilitators good. together yeah, and watch this and to see you guys um, express the same apprehension, concern, um, and then counsel for us right before we go into the, you know, the wound session or mm -hmm. something, you know, it's just, it's a rescue. That, that, I want to riff off of that a, a little bit too, because that's, what's really great is when you've done a few of these boot camps, and then you'll get those guys that just latch on, I want to do this too. And it's like, well, let's do it together. Right. And then they become facilitators with you. And then you put them, you, you sit with them through that. And they're like, you get, we get to do this too. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah. beautiful. Feels, feels, feels yeah. special. Yeah. yeah, it does. It's like, oh, this is so cool. And then we pray through it. We pray through all the stuff. And you the other, feel the it. other real disruption is that um, what well, we have to charge for, you know, food at some level and, you know, somehow you got to cover costs and maybe, maybe guys write some checks to mm -hmm. cover that and so on. But, but that the content is free, mm -hmm. you know, in a world today that is suspicious of every agenda, you know, out at the outset, I'll stand up there and just say, it's all free. It's been given to us mm -hmm. in the kind of like, you see like this veil fall back from guys who are prepared to be defensive mm. and, and say, ah, you know, these guys are in this for the money. Yeah, what's and the hook? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they're disrupted and it comes down and all of a sudden they're accessible because you've given it away. So thank you. Mm. So Joshua, Nathan, I know you guys, like you were where the list, a lot of our listeners are right now, years ago, you had never done this and you took a risk. And now you both have some miles. And what's beautiful is your miles are in like very different forms, like one-on-one -on -one to in your house, to private to public, to using a camp, different sizes, different geographies. I'm curious if you were just sitting with the men listening that haven't ever done a basic, but they're, they're, feeling, they're feeling a tug towards it. What would your counsel be to them? What have you learned? I'd say start small. Um, just very practically start small and small might mean two. It might mean six. I think Joshua and I both started with six. Um, it, it's not about the numbers per se, but the bigger they are, the more pressure comes in. And, and, you know, nothing does well under pressure the first time. Okay, that's huge because I'm the guy sitting there who's going 200. Let's go. <laughs> you know, like, like that, the, the feeling is get this big quick, mm -hmm. but, Six guys, that's a good start. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, I would say pray. Say, Father, who who do you want to be at this? And, and tug, you know, pull at their heart. And who do you want here? Who do you want in this? Who do you want to hear this message? Who hasn't heard this message? Mm -hmm. Or who needs to hear this again? Um, yeah, I would say, definitely say pray. Pray and ask the Father. He'll tell you. Yeah, and I don't discourage anyone from from going solo if they feel led to do that. Yeah. But the value of having just one more guy. Mm -hmm. Just one more to go through it with you, to share your apprehension, to pray together, um, to fret over the meals or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. The, the, the value of just, you know, a wingman mm -hmm. is, is it's worth its weight in gold. And I think there's actually two things that come to my heart as I'm asking the question. I'm thinking of all the conversations I've had with men like you of getting feedback and one of the pieces is to pray about public or private because they do have a distinction in yes. their mission. There's a time to say, I want to bring this to men entrusted to my care, 
men I know, a community that I have some currency with, or I want to go after. And then there's time, like the stories you told of, you make it public and you open up room for the wild goose and you just say sort of, here am I, send me. And so to pray about that. And the other piece I wanna encourage listeners, it never ceases to amaze me that when I give my heart to go after the hearts of other men, I get an upgrade every time. Hmm. I mean, I've been to every Wada Heart boot camp we've ever done. And every time in the in giving, we receive. Yes. Right. And so if I just look at how much maturing and integration and deepening as a son that's come to me when I've been in service of others, you just go, it's it's worth it for that alone. Hmm. You guys are both nodding your heads. Mm, yeah, that's so good. I totally agree. The boot camp I did with just one guy, I got so much out of it mm. because I got to participate. Right. I was a participant because the food, it was done. Yeah. And it was just, that was the biggest thing. And so I got to sit and, and, and I've, I've done it so many times with the same, the original one. I know there's an upgrade now and there's been new upgrades, but um, I re would receive so much from every single message again. And it was like, you told a story at, at a debrief last boot camp. Like a guy came to you and told you a story and you said, I never said that <laughs> <laughs> because the Holy Spirit is speaking. Yes. And that's what's so beautiful. The Holy Spirit is taking control of our thoughts and our, and yes. our mind. And it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, Morgan, I had a quick reaction. I was like, well, hang on, that's a little selfish. You, you know, like, like I'm going to give and mm -hmm. so I can get. And, mm. and, and yet the passage that immediately came to mind is the Lord says, test me in this and see if I won't open the storehouses of heaven. Mm. Yes. And it really feels true. We are, in, in, we are investing kingdom resources that get multiplied back to us somehow as they're also multiplied mm. to the men who come. Mm. Out of all the boot camps I've done, and I've done a few, there hasn't been one time where there's been a miss. It's it's 100 for 100. Mm. So if you're out there and you're you're like, I don't know, and you're still kind of on the edge, I'm just a normal guy like you. Mm -hmm. That's I'm just a normal guy like you, and I'm 100, I'm batting a 1,000. You can do this. God comes. It's not on me. It's on God. It's not on me. It's on God. So what you're saying, you're a hundred for a hundred in God showing a hundred percent. It's like, I'm, I'm like, okay, this last weekend, me and the CEO, we got together and we went to this place called the shack. It's literally a dump. And I did that on purpose. And uh, we got out in the woods and God came, God came, spoke to him. And it's because of, it's because of what I've been learning in Wild at Heart is because of what I've been learning in the boot camps and, mm. and this ministry and the podcast mm. God spoke to him mm. over mm. and over and over again. Tears, joy, mm. life, um, change, eternal change. Mm. It's real. It's real, guys. It's real, man. It's real. Nathan, thank you. Thank you. Joshua, thank you. Mm. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for taking a pretty big risk actually on this. Thank you for keeping going. Thank you. That is beautiful. Yeah. And we don't normally have guests on the shows, our listeners know, but we wanted them to hear these stories because it's so beautiful and it's available for everyone. That I just love the kingdom of God. Everybody gets a part. Everybody gets a front row seat, right? You get a front row seat to the mm. work of God. Yeah, as we're sitting here, John, I'm just praying in my spirit. It's going, God, what are, you, what are you up to? What are you saying? And just what's coming to my heart is this is a risk, and it's a risk worth taking. So as we bring this in for a close for this week, part one, part two next week with your wives talking about captivating core and those beautiful stories— um, and then asking them some questions about your marriage. Um, <laughs> we want to say a couple of things. Guys, if you're listening to this, um, and ladies, as you're thinking towards, wait, there's a women's version of this, first off, maybe you want to go to one first, and you can get on our website, walletheart.org, get on the events page, and you can find uh, basic and core 
available um, here in the U.S., but also in locations around the world as people host them and, and post them. So you might want to go to one first. Um, and if you want to host one, then all the materials are right there. And the website to get on the basic site is wildatheartbasic.com. Wildatheartbasic.com. That's great. So thanks again, guys. What, what a ride we're all on. What a story we have found ourselves in.